right? People yeah. get so frightened of simple statements that that because we live in a world of dog whistles, and yeah. that's that's why when we look at the whole Taylor Swift phenomenon, you know, we talk about Taylor Swift on the show a lot. Galatea, I, I have I have an obsession with Taylor Swift in that yeah. I like her music, but I think she is a terrible person, and I think she is a prime example of toxic femininity. Oh, but, interesting. Interesting. But, that sounds an interesting but, topic, actually. <laughs> now she's apparently a deep state op because she's dating <laughs> Travis. And I'm looking back at all of this and go, I like some of her early songs. I can't get through Antihero without retching. Uh, I don't get it. But to me, she's one of those. Um, she is supposed to be one of theirs meaning kind of more middle of the road or right wing. And the more she gets older, she's not, right? It, it's that the way she looks does not match what's coming out of her music. And I think that's part of the appeal because she's got that vaguely, you know, we, we called her, a, I called her a budget femme fatale because uh, she's got that good girl look, but then she does the bad girl lyrics and I do think this sense of uh, Galatea, I think you said the idea of being a traitor of some kind comes into it. Yeah. 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 And I mean, well, I've they, been I've been called a gender traitor by feminists, so I get it from the other side. Yeah. Well, there there was a point. Um, I think it was like back in 2017 or so where people were demanding Taylor Swift speak on politics. Yeah. Mm. Um. And so when she kept refusing, the right started to go, one of us, one oh, of us. Okay. And that, and, oh, that's why she's not saying anything. Cause you know, she's secretly a Trump supporter. Um, no, she's a fan of the Dixie chicks. <laughs> yeah. And so a large part of why she was silent on politics so long is because she remembered what happened to them at when they got, I mean, they were one of the first major cancellations when I look back with oh, yeah, the, the term I... to get Dixie chicked is yeah. a thing. So, yeah. so uh, Dixie chicks were a country band who were absolutely mm -hmm. huge in the early 2000s, but then they were doing a show uh, in London, ironically, and they pretty much opened with saying, we're ashamed that the president is from Texas, referring to George W. Bush. Um, and they were immediately canceled because, like, this was just as we were going to war with Iraq after 9-11. Okay, so, yeah, maybe not great optics. Yeah, and uh, I think it was, like, even the Red Cross wouldn't take a million-dollar donation from them. Oh, yeah, wow. it was, it was, um, it's, it was one of those phenomenon that just took on its own steam. Mm -hmm. And, again, I think it's because it was country, right? I mean... Mm. there's all these assumptions we make about people. And this is why I think discussing the idea and the, the value of traditional femininity is really important. Cause if you read any, I mean, look at <sighs> Peggy Carter, like agent Carter is a throwback to a certain type of character from wartime films, mm -hmm. but she is, very she's traditional. the love interest. Yeah, she she's the love interest in the first Captain America movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then she got uh, she's Captain. She's now evolved into Captain Britain, which is an alternate timeline Captain America. Because in a what if she got the Super Soldier Soldier, but not Captain America. So she's she's seen as strong female character, but she's about as traditional as she comes. You know, Haley Atwell's look is very spot on 40s. Mm -hmm. This is true. Yeah. And I mean, in the ABC TV show, they actually had her in one of those women's uh, boarding houses because she was unmarried and you couldn't live completely alone while she was working for the SAS. And mm. I think it's interesting that people miss that was the paradigm for women then. I mean, my grandmother was an army nurse in England during World War II. And 
she was, you know, she was a housewife afterwards. Both are true. Mm -hmm. And this idea, I want to get into this idea of that, that song brought up the idea that you have to choose a job or a family as if family is not a job mm -hmm. and how we can start talking about this in a, in a less, in a less destructive way. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like I said, it's, if we can't acknowledge that, running a home and raising a family is a full-time job and you're requiring women to do both and in some ways it's even more than a full-time job because it never stops you don't get off hours mm -hmm. when yeah. when you have kids especially and if we can't acknowledge that that's work and if you want women to do both that's so unfair yeah and to require that that that's not a partnership at that point no. that's that is in a sense it's a kind of domestic slavery mm -hmm. yeah when i where, think about it where it, did the trad movement get this idea that it's not a partnership because all of the older books i used to read it was all very i mean even sherlock holmes it was terrified of women always used women as assistants on cases because he didn't understand how women thought he was confused by women but respected them. Any of those Girl Friday uh, wartime or pre-wartime books, women are very um, clever and competent and capable. Mm -hmm. So where did this idea come from? I don't know if either of you have any answers that it's not a partnership and men are in charge and men control and women submit. And that was never real. Where did it come from? I Honestly, I think part of it is because we've also talked about before how feminism, modern feminism, has created this idea that women have always been helpless and yes. powerless. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as women have screamed about it and like, oh, we didn't have right, which was true. It's like, mm -hmm. we didn't have rights. And it's, you know, when you got divorced, the man kept the children because they were his. And I mean, that goes back to ancient Rome mm -hmm. with, okay. But so the, as women have screamed about that, men have bought into it and gone, oh, okay. If that's how it was, well, things were better for men back then. So let's get back to that. And essentially women have created their own oppression. <laughs> in yeah. that sense i think yeah I, I i think a big part of that i think a big part of that is true um sorry did i interrupt you, Are you gonna... no go on yeah yeah no i agree i think i think actually a big part of it does come from um feminism and this isn't this is the annoying thing as well it's like if i feel like if i criticize any aspects of feminism then it's like oh you you hate feminism you want everything. it's like you can be critical you know of parts of it without throwing the whole thing out mm -hmm. but i think um, one of the mistakes, or I don't even know if I'd call it a mistake, because maybe certain things had to be done to get, I, I don't know, but one of the consequences, let's say, is, and especially now, especially now in the, is, is just constantly the, the victimhood thing, the female mm -hmm. victimhood, the, like again and again and again, and to the point where it's ridiculous, like you'll hear some things where it's like, I've been oppressed because of this thing, and it's like, oh, come on, like, um, yeah it, it's like oh who who called it this fainting couch feminism where ironically you know the whole point of feminism was to be like women can be strong and and then it kind of goes back to oh my god someone said a thing i'm gonna right. faint and swoon and it's kind of like okay are we victorian like you know the, this stereotype again um like don't use bad language in front of the ladies type thing mm -hmm. um so i think i think yeah i think feminism does have a definitely have a part to play in that um it, i yeah. i wonder if he here's the thing we a lot of people don't know history and they don't actually study it like i have the benefit of one i'm interested in history particularly powerful women in history so like i'd already done research in that and then my boyfriend has a history degree so like i've, I've had a lot of great discussions with him about it and we've talked about you know this idea of you know that 
like I said, modern feminism perpetuates of, oh, women have suffered all this time. And I can Mm -hmm. show examples of women throughout history who, yes, they've had to work within a a patriarchal system, but they still found ways to exert power. Mm -hmm. Like even Caesar Augustus, you know, there is no denying that his wife, Livia Drusilla, was extremely influential on him and his his decisions and the choices he made as emperor like we have records that he would make lists of things to talk to her about like oh this is what happened in the senate meeting and then he would take detailed notes of what she said and use that to then form his own opinions and to form his decisions going forward and i it, <sighs> Like I said, yes, there was a system women had to work within, but, it, you know, uh, Galatea did a video about the Amazon Prime Cinderella. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Galatea, I'm dragging you back to this one. <laughs> and th- this, you know, thanks to James Corden for nothing. Um, but th- this the idea- The first feminist Cinderella, don't you know, according to him. He's he's a trailblazer. He made the first ever what, feminist Cinderella what, movie. What is this about men <laughs> saying, I made a feminist thing, like- a pat on the back, that's what problem. they want. They want so, a pat on the back. Yeah, and so like, I, I've talked about this here before, but you know, now I have Galatea here, so I've got to go into it again, because I, I absolutely loved your video on it. I think I've watched it like three times. But, you know, it, it's this idea that, oh, she's not going to marry the prince because she wants to own her own fashion business, but women aren't allowed to own businesses, never minding that until just like, 50 to not even a hundred years ago fashion was run by women like the Mm -hmm. idea of men running fashion houses is very new like christian dior and all this that was not Mm -hmm. normal before it was you had the female mantua makers who Mm -hmm. ran their own businesses and like that that's what they did they sewed dresses and so and then women were the ones who dictated fashion. Like I see people, uh, we're coming back to corsets for a second. You mm-hmm. know, people who are like, oh, corsets are tools of the patriarchy. Yeah. No, men hated corsets and they tried to get women to stop wearing them. And women told them to fuck off. Yeah. Because women- I actually- didn't know that, did they? Why didn't they like corsets? Well, they, I- they finally had to, uh, they came in under rationing. That's why they finally fell out of favor. Yeah, but I mean, part, I don't know why men didn't like them. There were male doctors who would perpetuate the idea, oh, it warps the system and it's bad for you. But like, it was the bra at the time. Like I wear a corset now because it helps support my back Mm, and it's incredibly supportive. And if you have a well-made one, I will emphasize Mm -hmm, well-made, it doesn't hurt. It just feels like you're getting a hug around your torso essentially and but it's women dictated fashion Mm -hmm. it was never a man's arena and so especially with the amazon prime cinderella to claim that oh she can't run a business and you made a great point in your video about how if she becomes princess and then becomes queen well, one, she can convince her father-in-law or husband to change the law for her. But mm-hmm. two, she would also become the chief expert in fashion. You know, she would well, be the one setting trends. Exactly. As the, as the queen, as the, the like everyone would be following her example. Everything she wore would be trendy the mm-hmm. next day. Right. Um, but, but I mean, that Amazon Prime Cinderella is just a prime example of performative pop culture feminism. Um, that is actually really deeply offensive because yeah. the, like the idea, I think there's a speech in that where her stepmother like says to her, and bearing in mind that I think from what I remember in this Cinderella movie, they're like a middle-class family without a man in the house at that point. And the stepmother says to her stepdaughter, women in business, this don't, this is such a ridiculous notion. Don't, it's like how, like the idea, even if in certain times and places, women weren't technically allowed to own a business, the idea that women were never involved in business is like, how do you think mm-hmm. life worked? What do you think they did? Like, if their husband, you know, like, do you know, like, loads of them would do accounts for their for their husbands or yeah. fathers, or would be working in the family business or, because they had to be. Because what else? This this idea that was presented in that movie that 
Oh no! Before, before, um, actually, before the sixties, women they just sat at home and and just knitted or something. It's like it's so offensive to what women have done for society. And then, of course, it um, that only has fuel to the fire when you get kind of the red pill aspect, saying women are useless, women are useless. And part of that is feminism. Not feminism in some ways hasn't helped with that. But I, I kind of wonder, um, as you were talking, I kind of I wonder if part of that is a consequence this kind of um women as kind of victims thing and that i wonder if that kind of started i suppose as a tactic i don't know maybe not but as a tactic to kind of get men on board is appealing to like um yeah. savior savior instincts like damsel in distress like look you know what i mean like we've helped come so to kind of push the cause forward but like, i hadn't now thought about that that's well okay i was gonna bring that up that's really interesting because mm-hmm. i i've said a few times you know based on my own experiences in television and then video games what's allowed you know is what the establishment allows through and you know feminism buffy man you know the last <laughs> of us man uh all female ghostbusters that's paul Fag. Uh, Judd Apatow, uh, Judd Apatow, Neil Druckmann, uh, Joss Whedon, uh, you, you can name James Corden. All these men are the ones actually deciding what gets made. And mm-hmm. what I see, my experience is that when you try to get something made, which is, I think, why Barbie became such a thing, right? Because that wasn't just Greta Gerwig directing, but it was Margot Robbie producing. And you saw the difference in in what they managed to do because guys like the and I, I don't know all of them personally, but they are the ones of the same ilk that I have dealt with. They want to promote women and they want to make stuff featuring women because they're the good men and the others are the bad men and how dare you Mm. woman say otherwise that's what you get when the mask drops and that you know misogyny in the left is central to that I have hit that um so many times in my own career I I won't I won't trauma dump on Mm. it but again and again and again and again you just hit a point where when you're trying to advocate you you hit that left wing male rage of you are supposed to worship me because I'm one of the good ones how Mm. dare you imply I'm not doing enough Uh, yeah yeah well how dare you imply I'm wrong and yeah. you know me being me, it's like, oh, I'm not implying you're wrong. I'm flat out saying you're wrong, and, <laughs> and you can imagine how that goes, right? Um, and that is something we don't talk about. I mean, on on the on our Discord, we were talking about how you know Neil Druckmann rushed, rummaged everybody up, got everybody mad with a plot twist in The Last of Us, the game, not the show, Galatea. But the voice actress for the character, Laura Bailey got attacked on Twitter. And you'd think that when you see somebody getting attacked for you shooting your mouth off, you'd stop shooting your mouth off because unintended consequences. But no, these guys double down. And Mm -hmm. I have been on the receiving end of guys, left-wing guys in the media grandstanding about women and then telling me to either if I'm going to engage with these horrible men, with the bad men, don't include them, you're on your own. Or like, we've covered women's issues enough. When I say, well, I think we should do a piece on on a woman's point of view on this piece. All these articles have been written by men. Oh, I think we've covered that enough. Which is code for know your place, let me defend you. They really, really don't like it when you don't want to be defended. Now- Mm. Yeah, sorry. Oh, go sorry. ahead, Galatea. No, 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 I don't. I don't want to interrupt. If yeah. you, were you, are you sorry? Do you... It, it's it's this weird disconnect between, see, uh, a woman of valor in media, something like a Red Sonia or even a Deja Thoris, or I'm trying to think of uh, uh, other sort of tough Lara Croft, everything like that. That's safe, right? Because the story is essentially on rails. Princess Leia. 
is another example. Uh, it's safe. And so there is a, people don't like to think of it as a trophy, but it is. It's like this woman will never make me feel bad. Whereas in real life, I, I just gave you an example of when my mouth mm -hmm. ran away from my, my filter. It happens a lot. <laughs> and women who are very strong. And I mean, I was, you know, my, my, my grandmothers were basically, um, granny weatherwax and nanny og from Discworld. so i had the the two examples but i mean my maternal grandmother she had a sharp tongue mm -hmm. and that was normal in my family but in the rest of the world the minute the minute you sass these guys suddenly don't like women of valor anymore now their pride is bruised because it and not even pride I don't think I think it goes back to that thing, you know, song identified in the past about they expect to go up, get beaten up by the world, come back and have a woman heal them. Mm -hmm. And they don't yeah. think about the other side of that is the woman's getting the exact same thing. Who's healing her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, can I this kind of thing has made me think of. Um, um, something I've been thinking about for a while. I want to get your guys' kind of opinion on this, but because mm -hmm. online now you'll see the argument a lot between either men or women saying, oh, men have it harder, women have it harder. Yeah. Um, but I kind of think, I want to know what you guys think. So I was kind of thinking of this idea as of male privilege versus female privilege, which I think both exist mm -hmm. in different ways. So my, I kind of think that male privilege is the assumption of competence. So the, you know, the like, the good things about that is that you're, um, you know, assumed that maybe you assume to be competent, maybe that you know what you're talking about, you're taken more seriously. But the flip side of that is I think you're not, um, it's like, like either maybe too high expectations or you're thought to not thought to be the victim, even if you are. Mm -hmm. And then I think female privilege is the assumption of victimhood, which sometimes can give you, sometimes can be useful, sometimes given an easy ride. Um, your fe feelings are heard, you're sympathized with, you're seen as vulnerable, you're kind of protected. But the downside to that is that you're not seen as competent or capable, right? even when you are. Um, and you're, so I think, and I think there's a clash now, you see that between men and women, So because you're coming from different perspectives, because if the women only see the taken seriously thing, they're going, but you men are taken seriously. You know, you're, you're not, yeah, you're not seen as like a helpless, weak kind of, victim or bimbo or whatever it is or need to be saved um and then you know from the men's point of view they're going but we're not listened to our feelings aren't heard like mm -hmm. we're not allowed to be vulnerable if we're the victim we're told to shut up and no we're not and get over it and you women are coddled and you're indulged and you're, it's like but kind of not seeing that so I was, yeah it just kind of made me think of that when you're talking about that um but i think that kind of miscommunication is, is 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 what a cause a lot of these kind of problems are but i really think i think it's interesting you mentioned the barbie movie as well because that is um one of the key kind of plot lines in the barbie movie is that in order to get the kens on their side and kind of is that is that they pretend to be helpless victims yeah and i think there is something in that i wonder if part of that was maybe necessary for feminism to kind of get off the ground is you know and I, I that's probably gonna that was probably really effective and probably necessary at the time is kind of appeal to men's like I think you say say save me instincts um I that, think, that, that came I from think... the hunger strikes during the first wave yeah but go ahead mm. song I'm, I'm making notes I'll I'll round up all the things <laughs> you're done yeah I think men I think there are a lot of men who they do like the idea of being able to rescue the damsel mm. not not necessarily out of a selfish you know, oh, I'm so much better way, mm -hmm. but in that they want to be the knight in shining armor, the way a lot of women do want to be the rescued princess. Mm -hmm. And I think that is part of it. It's, it's those ideas taken to an extreme in yeah. a way. And so when women play the victim, it does bring out a sense in men of, oh, I want to help. I mm -hmm. want to protect. Yeah. Can I and, can I just quickly add? Oh, sorry, absolutely. Just, really, just just quickly. So, so people, I, I'm not trying to, um, just people don't misinterpret me. I'm not trying to demonize either that instinct in men or, yeah. Um, yeah, I think sometimes it can, it can become patronizing or be used for wrong, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, trying to um, say that there's something inherently wrong with that. I think probably part of that is it makes sense from like an instinctive point of view 
Um, and I also think that there can be women who wrongly use that victimhood, like manipulative, and appeal to that in men and can then end up taking advantage of a guy or mistreating yeah. him by playing up to that and and being really manipulative and kind of um yeah abusing that that kind of power that she has in a way um, oh absolutely yeah but yeah and, so, and, so like what while it kind of a shadow side i don't want to demonize like men for feeling protective or you know for those things just to yeah say yeah i mean a shining example of that is i don't know if anybody anybody else here followed the brianna gay murder and it actually turned out the the girl involved that was that transgender girl who was stabbed a shocking amount of times two other teenagers who are 15 years old at the time stabbed her in a park and it actually turned out that the woman the the girl of the teens uh was the instigator and they found her more guilty because she basically cajoled and manipulated and uh, the the guy into it but it was her grudge and yeah. I, I think that definitely speaks. I mean, you said a lot there, Galatea. So I want to, first of all, Sorry. yes, <laughs> you're you're right. I've actually started using a model because my, my peer counseling business is overwhelmingly men. And you know, I've actually started using the idea of the man box and the woman box instead of male privilege and female privilege. And I find it actually works better, right? Because mm. there's this box that men are supposed to be in. And if you're in the man box, you're rewarded. If you're outside the man box, you're punished. Same mm -hmm. with women. You know, uh, if you're in the woman box, you're rewarded. It's a different sphere, but there are still rewards for it. Uh, we know that women are perceived to be more virtuous, honest, kind of better people inherently until we do one thing that's challenging. And then that that presumed um, uh, advantage just just crumbles. It just absolutely mm -hmm. inverts. The minute you get caught in one thing, you're evil forever. And that was actually the thing that the Hillary Clinton campaign with all its millions failed to account for. And it's inexcusable that they did that. I mean, somebody like a Margaret Thatcher, she goes with it, the Iron Lady, right? Mm. She's just going totally against it. So you see her as sort of a masculinized figure and so she can get away with it. She's playing into a different trope. But that thing you said about um, women as victims being temporarily useful for feminism, that's documented because the, mm. the, the suffragettes, right, they, they were being badly beaten up by the police. Mm. And when they were uh, <laughs> putting barbed wire in their flower bouquets to fight them off, they were seen as a kind of a novelty like oh these savage they that's where the amazons came from in mm -hmm. uh in wonder woman the uh press uh nicknamed emmeline panker's honor guard the amazons because they were fighting with cops they were brawling but when they started actually arresting them these women went on hunger strikes and used the negative press of the force feeding they did to these women in prison and it got a lot of play yeah and they lost a bit of sight of the fact that one of the things they were looking for was equality under the law they sacrificed that to get some public sympathy back and unfortunately the minute you start doing an emotional campaign you have to play two people's prejudices to try yeah. to change them and that doesn't always work but mm -hmm. that thing that you said about um you know the saving the princess saving the woman uh i do want to pivot on that one a little bit because uh there's this show called blue eye samurai that's great in the way it, it examines gender and race and the the male sidekick is this guy named ringo and he has this ongoing thing about being useful and I think that is, it's such a brilliant summary and a cuddly package of what, why men are motivated that way. Because let's face it, women's worth we're taught is innate. It's inherent, right? Mm -hmm. You either are beautiful and valued or you're not. And well, you have to take what you get because you're, you're either innately worth something you can't build. Where it's, mm -hmm. um, it's the red pill notion of... Yeah. 
women are men have to become that, that's exactly yeah. it and mm-hmm. so men become at a very young age they're they're modeled to be useful to be fixers to be of service and that is where they get their worth and it becomes a real issue when they can't provide anything for a woman because then where does their value lie in that relationship and i i do think it's worth talking about that from from a sympathetic place because i think we eventually do need to hit a point where that's substituted for hey you know what's really useful like just listening to me and <laughs> and validating my perspective on something instead of trying to fix it for me Right. Like stop yeah. thinking about the Roman Empire for five years. <laughs> Please. Because here's the thing about the Roman Empire, okay? The Roman Empire was the time when women's work got torn away. Yeah. It used to be that things like baking were considered not things you could make money. And in the Roman Empire, if a woman baked at home, that was free labor. But if a man baked, well, that was for pay. That's when men started baking was freaking Rome. There are so many other examples of that, because, of course, with the extension of the Roman Empire, it's like the cook on the pirate ship. Mm -hmm. Right. And so all of a sudden, because of the Roman Empire, all of these things that were considered unpaid women's work suddenly became something that men could profit from. And I think that that's when the complementarian, different but equal, really did shift to a dominance thing. What do you guys think Mm -hmm. about that? I mean, we know I like, I mean... (laughs) Yeah. You know, like we, we can I, I know I know what appeal to currency. It's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I know what a lot of people, a lot of guys, especially when they think about the Roman Empire, it's not so much what it actually was. Yes. It's the dream of Rome, of this golden city, shining city on a hill, essentially. But I saw someone, oh God, an author I follow recently posted something where she said, men men thinking about the Roman empire and women thinking about Regency England is the same side of the historically context lacking coin (laughs) or something like that. Whereas the Norse got everybody beat. If you look at those stories, like first of all, it wasn't God of this, God of that. It was individuals who you could agree with and not agree with. There was gender bending all over the place. The women (laughs) were cheating on the men as much as as the men were cheating on the women. We don't talk about that as much. The Vikings were, well, the the Danes were shockingly egalitarian. Well, because it had to be right. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't have the rigid, uh, collectivist. Oh, that's a funny thing. The Roman Empire was exceptionally collectivist, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, and, and we're getting back to this whole thing about a lot of this conservative, uh, you know, right wing, left wing stuff. It, it's an illusion. It's much more of an identity than actually a set of principles, and I think that's why it makes talking about this stuff so difficult and why you get such strong reactions from otherwise smart people. Because once you hit an identity point, people stop thinking. They, Mm -hmm. they just go into this very defensive place. And I know that because like to me for years, I was one of those people who are, Oh, girly girls are bad. And only people, you know, only people like me who aren't are good. Right. I realized that was wrong, that that was just me having a defensive reaction because the 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 girly girls were the ones who were proper girls and rewarded Mm. for it. And I was acting out of the messaging I'd received of you're not a proper girl. Therefore, you're going to be abused and cast aside your entire life. And the minute I stopped reacting emotionally to that my whole perspective and my entire analysis changed to the point that I had to come up with my own feminist analysis framework because nothing fit all the facts. And that's when I got ostracized. (laughs) 